Hi, I'm Greg Combs from uh, Celebrity Tech Scandal, X Dog Fashion Disco, and you're watching the Grizzly uh, channel on YouTube. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Grizzly TV podcast. Uh, today, I'm joined by Warren of Celebrity Sex Scandal. How are you doing today, bud? I'm doing great. Thank you for having us. Well, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we could say us to add some. Us, yeah, for, you know, to promote the band. I appreciate that. Okay, so basically, uh, we're just going to run through a couple of topics, a couple of stuff about music, just random stuff going on in the world right now. Sure. Uh, for about maybe 45 minutes or so. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, okay, so uh, the first one, uh, very sad news, actually, uh, that Eddie Van Halen has uh, passed away. To pretty much everybody who has ever picked up a guitar or listened to any kind of music, Eddie Van Halen was a str- was just an inspiration for all. Well, so, you know, uh, I was in the middle of, uh, so I, I teach high school during the day, and I was in my seventh period class teaching, uh, teaching, and uh, my dad texted me and said, Eddie, Eddie Van Halen died. And I had this flashback to my younger self because Eddie's the reason I started playing guitar. And I even got inter- interested in music. Um, clearly, I'm like, oh, one day I'm going to play like that. And clearly, I've never even approached barely any, anything <laughs> at that level. But, but um, I, I remember when I was a kid and I was so obsessed with him and I was like, what am I going to do when he dies? Like, what's going to happen when he dies? Like, cause when you're a kid, you're so like this hero worship is enormous and you're so sucked into everything about these people, you know? And, um, I just was like, I didn't know how I'm going to handle Eddie Van Halen's death. And now, you know, 30 years later when it actually happens, uh, I mean, the impact is large. I mean, he is an icon, he's a legend. Um, but, uh, you know, it's interesting that when it happened, it flashed back to that moment of like, you know, being 13 years old and wondering, you know, what was going to, what it was going to be like. He, he was an amazing, amazing musician. And, you know, uh, like I said, a game changer in music and, and my, one of my biggest influences and the reason I played guitar. Yeah. That see, since I'm, you know, a younger guy, I do know, you know, Eddie Van Halen, all of the legacy that he's done for the world. The biggest, like, this is probably one of the biggest, like, deaths I've rocked the news as of late. Like, especially in rock music in general, because I can't really remember. Well, I mean, I probably can. I just can't think of any off the top of my head. Well, I I think the most recent one that was a bigger, like, in that rock era was, like, I know Neil Peart was recently from Rush. Um, But it's funny, because when I was teaching today, I was like, you know, I was like, oh, man, it's weird. It's like, you know, it's like when Cobain died. And of course, everybody I was talking to was like, either didn't know who Cobain was or clearly wasn't alive when Cobain died. And I remember, you know, I remember that day. It was like, you know, I, I wasn't alive when John Lennon was shot, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I, I remember like, you know, the stories of like generations older than me of like the day John Lennon, uh, you know, uh, died. And then like, it was kind of like that feeling when Cobain went and, uh, you know, and then after that, just, you know, a whole uh, slew of those guys, man, mm-hmm. you know, but I mean, it, as much as like, you know, Cobain is a clear legend, uh, you know, Lane Staley, phenomenal and Chris uh, Cornell, phenomenal, but uh, none of those guys, I don't think, well, with the exception of Cobain changed the face of music like Eddie did, like Eddie Van Halen changed the face of music. And the only thing that changed Eddie's version of music was Cobain because it was still 80s kind of shredding rock until Cobain came around. You know, he was the guy that ruined Eddie's vibe. <laughs> I mean, literally, his name is synonymous with music in general. I mean, yeah. it's like he's he left such an impact that it's it's just a shame. Like, t- we can all agree that 2020 has been the worst fucking year uh, in the history of 20, 2020 yeah. years. You know what I mean? Well, it's yeah. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, it's it's just like very unfortunate that you know we just had to live in such a such a yeah, no. bad time, you know. Changing times, dude. Times are changing. It's fucking weird and uh, it's crazy. But I'll tell you what, there's a silver lining to 2020, and I don't want to get too much into it. But there's a silver lining. 
fucking vote. Go out yeah. and vote. Go out and vote. You heard the man. <laughs> there's your there's your silver lining. Okay, let's solve let's solve the problems. Yeah, and uh, speaking of uh, Kurt Cobain and stuff like that, uh, I recently this is is old news at this point, but back in January, I think it was Puddle of Mud. They released a cover of About a Girl. It's possibly the worst cover I've ever heard. <laughs> I, like, it, I. What was he trying to do? Like, have you seen the the cover? I have not. So, like, I'm not really like I don't know. I've heard of Puddle of Mud. I don't know if I've ever heard a song from them. Um, it, you know, so I don't know. I don't. I haven't heard that at all. Okay. Well. So, so sorry for, for not being. No, I. That. I don't listen to Puddle of Mud either. Right. It's just that I was watching like. Uh, I was watching Rock's like top ten of uh, worst rock covers or something like that, and then the first, uh, the number first one was uh, Puddle of Mud uh, about a girl, and I'm like, it can't be yeah. that bad. And then you look it up, and it's like, <laughs> like I've never actually been like disgusted because of a bad performance. <laughs> like he, I'll put it to you this way: Kurt had a certain way with his voice where he yeah. could accentuate his vocals to the point where it sounds like he's screaming but he's just it's yeah. soft see see puddle of mud did not do that shit right <laughs> it, well so you know it, it's funny a lot of those kind of covers of that era like people like <clears throat> they're like oh well i'll just scream it out and make it heavy and it'll be really cool and you know that doesn't make shit cool like <laughs> you know what well, I mean? no. it, the worst part was it was acoustic guitars they were using oh, actual really? instrumental that's what i'm saying like if it was like six feet under doing six feet under doing ac dc covers with double pa- double bass and cookie monster growls it, like it would be different but it was just acoustics and that was it right oh that's interesting yeah well that's really interesting i still won't look it up <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll say I'll save you the trouble. You just don't. <laughs> Thank you. Just <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, people who may not have heard of the band or are just confused about why I have this in the title, what what caused the the name? Uh, well, I guess you could put both of them: dog fashion disco and celebrity sex handle. What came about <clears throat> the names for that? Well, so it's interesting. Uh, so dog fashion disco. I was one of the founding members of dog fashion disco. And uh, I was there for, uh, you know, from the very beginning up until uh, right after um, Committed to a Bright Future, which is uh, 2003. Mm. Um, and uh, we were we were just it was probably Jesus, probably like 1997 ish. Um, we had a bunch of different names and we didn't know what to call ourselves. And um, <clears throat> so I was just kind of like asking people. And my cousin, uh, my cousin in Colorado, she's like, you know what I always thought would be a cool name? She's like, uh, um, Crystal and Pig. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, I like Crystal and Pig. She goes, or Dog Fashion Disco. And I'm like, that's cool, too. So I just went back and told the guys. I was like, hey, what do you guys think about these things? Because we've been trying to find a band name and couldn't, comp- couldn't compromise. We're like, yeah, we like that. We'll take it. And that was it. It was a very... Uh, easy you know uh situation when somebody else gives you the name um uh that caused us a lot of problems because with that name people is you know assume and expect a specific type of style like disco and um you know uh clutch is one of our one of our our biggest influence favorite band are you familiar with clutch at all uh not not really i do know the name though they're so fucking amazing. Anybody listening to this and watching it, please listen to Clutch. They're, they're brilliant. Um, and, uh, you know, they're from the same area on the East Coast. And uh, we were trying to, like, kind of latch onto their coattails and maybe go on tour with them. And uh, their manager told our manager, he's like, my band will never tour with a band that has disco in the name. <laughs> <laughs> like, no! Like, it had nothing to do with our music or our talent or, you know, so... Um, so that worked against us. Uh, and then, uh, when I started celebrity sex scandal, um, it, the whole band kind of really started as a joke. I mean, I was just recording songs to be silly and to be fun because I hadn't recorded and I hadn't played and recorded in forever. And so I wrote two songs, uh, the, um, the, 
uh, Ode to Katy Perry and the Ballad of, I'm sorry, and uh, Billy's Little Baby. And one was about uh, Katy Perry and the other one is about uh, uh, Miley Cyrus. <laughs> and they were very just like, it was all like the sexuality of these stars, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, in hindsight, uh, that first album that we wrote, the lyrics are completely inappropriate. And especially uh, as the Me Too movement fucking rose, (laughs) we look back and we're like, oh, my God, because like it it was in jest and it was a joke. But Katy Perry Mm -hmm. is about like drugging Katy Perry, you know, so you can hang out with her. (laughs) And, uh, you know, in in hindsight, like, wow, what stupid fucking horrible lyrics. But we're joking around. Mm -hmm. um and so so with that with those songs we're like it'd be funny just to call the band celebrity sex scandal and so um that that's how that came out uh the downside is that you know uh we have i don't know thousands and thousands and thousands followers but most of them think that we're a porn website (laughs) (laughs) so like it is the down, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, this will be great, and this will be funny, and blah, blah, blah. And like, when people are Googling celebrity sex handle, they'll find our band. Mm. Uh, no, nobody finds our band. All the porn people find us and just, you know. So. I, can, I can speak from experience. That is exactly what I did. As soon as I, <laughs> I went on Google and I searched it up, and I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute, this has nothing to do with music. And I'm just yeah. like scrolling through. And so, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we, we have on our. Uh, <laughs> In our Facebook page, we'll have random dudes from like Indonesia being like, hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they try to offer you money or something like that. They just. <laughs> it was a bad choice, which is interesting because before we released this album, I was telling the guys in Celebrity Sex Handle, I was like, dude, why don't we change the name to Crystal and Pig, which was the other one that was, you know, suggested you yeah. know, 20 years ago. And we decided to not do that, but uh, yeah. So then, so it's just like when you when you're when you have a little bit of uh, brand notoriety, it's tough to change the name, especially when you're trying to gain more, you know. So, mm-hmm. so we stuck with it. Um, <laughs> I actually, you actually answered one of my questions I had. I was uh, I was going to ask you about the uh, controversy of your music, but you know, you already the con- controversy of of the of those those topics. Yeah, just just in general, because you know the name you know, some yeah. of the songs and, uh, uh, as a little bit of a, uh, segue, uh, I'm going to move into, uh, I call this, uh, part of the podcast, explain that name. Basically I go through your discography. Uh, sure. I, I would go through all of them, but honestly, yeah, I, can, yeah, yeah. I can, I honestly, honestly, I can ask you about all of the song titles. So I'm just going to skip or, or I'm just going to stick to a celebrity sex scandals for now. and just kind of go sure. through some of them because, i don't know there's a lot to be asked (laughs) right 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 well yeah okay go ahead okay so the first one uh uh billy's little baby well billy's little baby is about miley cyrus she was coming oh okay yeah coming and so you know this billy uh cyrus's baby i'm guessing so like all of a sudden she's super super you know sex star in hollywood i'm guessing ballad of britney is about britney spears then and then ode to Katy perry same thing well, okay. so here's what's stupid about that. That entire fucking album, the entire derivative album, that entire fucking first CD is about celebrity sex scandal. So like... It, like so all 10 that, songs are about 10 different celebrities. Yeah. So like the the, the prototype is a takeoff of Weird Science and uh, okay. who is the, the redhead chick? Kelly LeBrock? And like how they so, built... Yeah. A, have you ever seen the movie Weird Science? Like early mm-hmm. 80s? Yeah. Yeah. And so like, those guys build a robot, you know? And so that's mm-hmm. what that song's about. But then like through the eyes of Jack Jordan, Jack Jordan was a fucking, um, was a stalker of Umar Thurman. Oh, and really? so like <laughs> followed her around town and was like trying to like write her letters and poems and shit. And then uh, oh, okay. the very last song, I forget the name of it, was about David uh, Duchovny and his sex addiction. Oh, like the, every uh, the single song that and so it went with the whole celebrity sex scandal theme and we thought we were being smart and witty uh and uh in hindsight <laughs> i feel <laughs> like it was a bad idea like in excess the song i in excess is about in excess which is michael hutchinson who fucking hung himself jerking off <laughs> i mean the song is about autoerotic asphyxiation so so to so 
just <laughs> so I'm de- I'm definitely getting this video age restricted. That's basically what you're telling me. Here. <laughs> That's basically I'm just gonna get a notification from YouTube. Yeah. What the Sorry. fuck is this shit? <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, it was uh, it, you know, it, again in hindsight, like so. Derivative was an interesting experience for me because the first time. In Dog Fashion Disco, you know, I was a, a co-writer and a co-player and, you know, I, I was a part of the band. Um, but when uh, I did this album, um, when I did Derivative, uh, it, it was, it was, I wrote it all. I wrote everything. I wrote all the songs. I wrote all the lyrics. I wrote everything. And it was the first time I ever did everything. And, um, you know, so to me, it was a big like flex. It was kind of like, let me see what I can do. Let me try and be silly. Let me just do anything I want. And I had guys with me that were like, cool, let's try it, you know? Mm -hmm. And from there, the band grew. So when I look back at that album, it's extremely immature, extremely immature. Um, So, but it was a starting point for where we are now, you know? So that's kind of the way I anticipate, I, I look at it now. Yeah, I would I would probably say like stuff like um because people can say like I, I talked to Michael Grip uh from Kiss and Candace about this in my first podcast. Uh I basically told him we were talking about like how people get canceled and stuff like that. And I told him like things weren't like they are now. Like people didn't get as offended as they were back in the day. Right. So like me being the, the type of person who, you know, watch South Park and watch stand up and stuff like that i was used to this type of stuff so like it didn't bother me so like if you know there's songs from bands that that just would not ever be made today (laughs) and it's like like even i want to see like a like maybe you guys can be the band i want to see somebody actually step up and pretty much defy all the odds and be like yeah we're trying to offend you deal with it (laughs) well so (laughs) Um, I, I want to feel that way too. I want to do that too. Yeah. Um, it, there's inner band politics that are about like, you know, like what to do, but as, as an aside, one last song title on derivative, and then maybe we can talk about integral, but the staff of Mo- Moses, mm-hmm. that's about Tommy Lee's penis. <laughs> about how big fucking Tommy Lee's dick is because the, the, chorus, is like, the chorus is I could do anything with the penis of Tommy Lee. Because if you had a dick that big, you could control the goddamn world, right? <laughs> that is the best name I have ever heard for a penis in my life. The staff of Moses. Okay, I'm pretty sure you went through like all of the songs. <laughs> besides, besides, besides Midsummer's Night's Dream. So if you want to... That's about Lindsay on. Lohan at the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> okay, there you go. And then... Did we do cruise control? I don't know if we did that one. No, yet. that's Tom Cruise, man. Tom Cruise oh, with okay. his whole yep. Scientology thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> okay. I never, <laughs> I never thought I would go through like an entire album and just. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, and you know what? No, honestly, it's, it's not even a problem. That that's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid, is what it is, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm still looking at it, and I'm just thinking to myself, like. <laughs> did you look at the cover? I see the so cover. The, I didn't click the, on it. Hold on. If you look at it closely, it's uh so uh the third step of derivative is um so you have the third step, I'm sorry, the 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 third derivative of position is the jerk. So you have position to velocity. It's it's legit uh thrust and jerk uh rocket equations. Uh, those are from physics, uh, you know, position, velocity, acceleration, thrust, and then the jerk for non-constant uh, thrust. But intermixed in the equations, if you see, there's a bunch of stick figures fucking each other. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to like zoom in on it. I'm like, looking at it. <laughs> I, I can see like I can see like one stick figure on the right. It was. It was just. <laughs> it was like I said. It was a very immature album. Very immature concept. It was really fun at the time, but. It, it was a stepping stone for us to get where we are now uh, as a group, which is cool. So, you know, and, and I take, you know, and the fact of the matter is, is that because I wrote all of that, like, you know, the other guys are quick to be like, fucking blame grade for that album. Blame him for that <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? I mean, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing if they blame me for the album. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, well, I would like to think that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so possibly one of the most, 
off-putting album covers I've ever seen in Integral. Is this supposed to be some sort of like alien concept album or something like that? Because what I'm, <sighs> what I'm getting from like the the first couple of the first couple of uh, song titles and then looking at the album cover, I'm just thinking to myself like, this is like Rob Zombie like trying to do his UFO type shit. So you know, we didn't really. This was the first time that we turned the art over to somebody else completely. Oh. And so I didn't have any control over that. <laughs> Wait. So. Okay, you gotta explain that story <laughs> if you well, sent that so, off to somebody else. Well, yeah. So, well, so we know a guy. He was he's a big dog fashion disco fan, and he still did. He actually did some art for us on this new album, uh, on uh, the fundamental. He did some logos and stuff. We I've known him for I don't know forever, and um, so uh, Shane Tuttle, by the way, he's a graphic artist. If you guys look him up, you'll you'll find the logos and shit that he does. Um, but. Uh, you know, I'm like, hey, can you come up with a cool idea? And he's like, I'm thinking about like kind of a this and that. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, just come up with something that looks cool. Like, because we didn't have an idea of what we wanted. Mm-hmm. And we saw that and we thought it was cool. Um, it, it turned out we had that song, Intergalactic, Intergalactic Love Song, which is about falling in love with an alien. So it happened to kind of work out. Um, and uh, I, we just thought it looked cool. And, you know, that was like, you know, when we put that on our T-shirts and stuff like that, that album cover was just a cool looking thing. So we just ran with it and people liked it. Can you, can you imagine like seeing somebody walk down the street with that <laughs> with that shirt? Yeah, I have. I own that shirt. Have- I, I, I'm that asshole <laughs> walking down the street. Like, I'm just imagining, like, say you like you look at this like out of context and then you just see somebody walking down the street with this type of shirt. What do you what do you ask them? <laughs> <laughs> like for real yeah, like what, what, the is, what the hell is that i mean it's like she's kind of sexy though you know what i'm saying like so that was the that was the whole thing is it was supposed to be celebrity sex scandal so like she's kind of sexy but she's this alien like it's weird <laughs> and it's you like, know and it, it's weird yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> i feel look I feel man like... look man i just play guitar okay i know <laughs> <laughs> i it's just out of context. Like, I'm not judging. You know what I mean? No, 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 dude. I'm open minded. Say whatever you want. Yeah. You can't. If, you no, I'm. I'm, not I'm just saying. It. Like, like I'm not judging. I'm. I'm a big fan of comedy bands. You know, stuff like Psycho Stick. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Psycho Stick, Steel Panther. You know, just bands like that. Like, so I'm used to this type of stuff. So it doesn't really like. It doesn't really like. I won't say it. It doesn't amuse me. It's just. Maybe my brain is just so inter- like <laughs> used to stuff like this that I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm just gonna ask uh, two off integral. Uh, Christmith. Sure. Uh, what's ask the other one first? Uh, the bastard sons of forgotten moons. Okay, another alien song. So we had a couple okay. songs about alien. Um, before I t- uh, talk about Christmith, because uh, Christmith leads into um fundamental really well um i just wanted to bring up in passing which i think is one of the coolest songs on that album because that song's about uh choking uh, your uh friends to death and <laughs> it's a very solid, if you, solid. If you listen to, did you hear that and did you get it mm-hmm. so like it, it it's a very happy sounding song and it's about choking somebody to death um but uh <laughs> um Bastard Sons was a Forgotten Moons. That song, I think, is one of the coolest songs I've ever written. Um, we really love that. And we've, we, we struggle to play. We, we have not ever played it live because it's a fucking hard song. So we've written like to two songs. Yeah, we've, we've written like two songs that are just like too fucking hard to even attempt live. And we've tried it like at practice and it's like, fuck. You know, so um, but that's I think that's a fantastic song, probably one of the best on that album. Is and it like so, a is it sort of like did you feel like uh what's where am I thinking of like accomplished that you made it, but you're just so proud oh, I, of, you're proud of it, I, so you don't really want to like accentuate it? Well, I don't want to tone it down in any way. I mean, yeah. I think that right now we have a couple of different players in the band uh with this album, and I think that we could probably pull it off live now then yeah. you know we just haven't we haven't revisited it um yeah i'm really i am really proud of that song it's uh it's it, so 
you know, it's funny, Eddie Van Halen is, you know, one of my biggest influences, but like, I'm not a very good guitar player. Like I, I struggle to play basic four, four grooves. Like my, my meter is not good in that, but <clears throat> if you throw me in a five, four or a seven, four in an odd time, then like, I feel comfortable, which is weird. Like, I don't know my brain works differently or like, I just like, because I suck, I just can add that extra beat <laughs> naturally. And so, um, you know, uh, when I write those kind of things, like we have a song on, um, on the fundamental, uh, where, you know, uh, it's an 11 16, which is kind of an unheard of time signature. And, uh, you know, uh, everybody's struggling <clears throat> and I'm like, I don't understand what's so fucking hard about this. You know what I mean? But like, it's cause everybody's brain works different, but, um, <clears throat> so to, to move to Christmas. So because this is clearly an age restricted, uh, <laughs> <laughs> topic hell um, just just list off all the shit that you can think of because <laughs> right no that's cool so like well to get to christ smith I, i'm glad you asked that uh that was heavily in, inspired by uh that's that is one of the only songs on the album the musics that i didn't write but i wrote a little lyrics to that song on that album um <clears throat> heavily inspired by maynard from tool it's it's so <clears throat> at the risk of being offensive, which I'm sure I haven't been at all yet. <laughs> um, it, it, it's an anti, it's an anti Christian song. Uh, you know, it's, it's about that organized religion is bullshit and people that buy into um, this, this belief system are, are just, are, are just buying into this, the stuff. And so it's the Christ myth, you know, it's, it's the myth. Um, and is that in, led uh... to, is it in a satire or is it like making a political type of statement? Well, so I wouldn't say it was political. Um, I, and I wouldn't say it's satire. I think it's just an opinion. You know what I mean? It's kind of like an opinion. And, um, you know, some of the, guy, the guys in the band kind of feel the same way. So it was kind of like, you know, it's not, you know. Um, and uh, so, so you mentioned, um, you know, derivative and then integral. Well, so derivative, those are the, those are all calculus mm -hmm. physics theories, right? Integral is the area yeah. under the curve of the second, uh, uh, the second position of, uh, or the second step of derivative. So it's, it's all mathematical base. And so then we went to <clears throat> the fundamental. The fundamental is the fundamental theory of calculus, which encompasses the derivative, derivative and, and integrals. Um, however, it took a long time for us to do um, the fundamental uh, because we had some band member problems and we were just going through a growing phase and stuff uh, in the, in that time period, uh, a lot kind of came to uh, um, <clears throat> our attention uh, for, for uh, probably about three of us uh, in the band. Um, and we became members of um, the satanic temple. Now to be clear, um, this not a real, it, it, it is a religion because mm -hmm. then they don't have to pay taxes and they don't have to do the wonderful things that religions, you know, don't have to, um, <laughs> but, it, but they are eighth. There's, it, there's no, there's, there's no eight, there's, no, there's no God. There's no, they don't believe mm -hmm. in Satan. They're not people out there. Like the satanic temple are not people out there that are like, you know, sacrificing and do, that, that's not it about it. Mostly it's a political movement about equality. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and just being human and what every human deserves for rights. So it became kind of political for us. And uh, on the fundamental, we decided to call it fundamental because it was the third step of the calculus thing. But in that process, we found out that as, as you, um, uh, through the, sat the, the satanic temple, um, there are seven fundamental tenets mm -hmm. to the temple. And so they have, uh, you know, it's kind of like their 10 commandments. And um, they gave us permission to uh, reprint those in the fundamental album. And uh, so there's a lot of message. There's a lot of political religious message in this new album. And um, I think it's timely for us. We don't want to turn people off um, that don't have the same views that we do, you know, Yeah. but I want to be, I want to be very clear that the satanic temple has nothing to do with like the devil. You know what I mean? But the imagery that our new album cover is, you know, the imagery is there, um, but it's not like people are devil worshiping. It's not that at all. It's mostly like completely, complete equal rights, 
We have a song called The Cost, which is about George Floyd. Um, mm-hmm. We have we have a song about, uh, you know, the downfall of America. We have uh, songs that are straight up satanic about why why shouldn't you just be part of the Satanist movement? Because, you know, be a good human. That's the message. Mm-hmm. And so the fundamental was really a, a, an amazing stepping stone for or, or you know, step for us to take. Um, I'm very, very, very proud of this album. Um, not only because, you know, when you look, when you compare this to something as stupid as derivative, which is fun and there's some good songs on there. Um, it, it's a, it's just a whole new level of, uh, of music for us. And, uh, it's really fucking good. I mean, it, it's one of those things that when, <clears throat> when I make a new album and I write stuff, I understand that people that listen to the kind of music that I write have a very um, specific taste. You know what I mean? Like it's not widely accepted. It's a small audience. It's a narrow area. Um, This album broadens that Um, it's not as, as narrow. Um, And we didn't give up any of our um, eclectic moves and time signatures. It just happened to be a little more cohesive and it just turned out, turned out way better than I expected. So mm-hmm. I'm really, really proud of it. Would you, uh, if you had like one thing to say to tell people about this album, like besides being like open-minded, like what is uh, something that you would want to tell people about the new album? I think it fucking rocks more than, <laughs> more than the other albums. Because like, again, like it, it's just more, I think really what it is, is it's more accessible. I think that's what it is. It's like, you know, when you listen to the Bastard Sons, the Forgotten Moons of Bastard Sons, you have to be patient. You have to understand, you know, that mm-hmm. we're doing this. You have to be patient. This album is a little more straightforward, but without giving up the little, you know, quirkiness, you know. Yeah. Um, it's just more mature and um, it's accessible. Uh, so... Would you say that like people may not be able to take you seriously because of derivative or <laughs> that's no. what that's what we've been worried about. But you know what, man, I still, you know, I still like, we still play, uh, we're doing a, uh, a CD release live stream mm-hmm. on uh, October 30th for the CD release of uh, the fundamental. And we're still playing four songs from derivative on mm-hmm. that. Cause they're cool songs live and they're fun and they're punchy and they got energy. So like, I'm not really too worried about it. Like some of the guys in the band are worried about that. You know, I'm not so worried about it. I'm more worried about my job. I mean, I'm a public school teacher and I'm writing songs about Tommy Lee's Lee's penis. (laughs) Yeah. I was, I was going to mention, I was going to ask you, do any of your students know that about your band or listen to your music or anything like that? Some of them do. I clearly do not clearly do not promote it or publicize it or say anything right at all um but uh there are <laughs> i had a i had a parent come in one night on uh on parent gonna night. be good yeah and he's like <laughs> well he's the last guy there i'm like i'm waiting to fucking leave because you stay you work all day and then you wait there for to meet all the kids and their parents and all this shit and this guy comes in like at the last like 30 seconds i'm like fuck and he looks like a fucking dirty hippie and he's got this long hair and shit and he comes in he's like hey he walks right up to me and shakes my hand and i'm like the guy's reeking a beer you know which i got no problem with but i just i'm not drunk yet so you know what i mean like uh and he's like i just want to let you know man my daughter loves your class she's doing great in here and i'm not worried about her at all i just came up here because i wanted to talk to you and i'm like okay and he goes I know who you are, man. I know who you are. <laughs> and I got your CDs. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. That's awesome. You know, I appreciate that, but it really fucking freaked me out, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, some people, like, I've had kids be like, hey, Mr. Combs, what is this? And they show me things that they find on their, you know, on their iPad or whatever. Because if they just get in there, they start Googling at this, you know, at this point, you can find shit. So, um you know, I, I I picture it like he he walks in and and he starts talking to you, and then as soon as he says I know who you are, and then he starts talking about 
and you start talking about your he the music and stuff like that. I just imagine you grabbed him by the shirt and said, "Don't you dare say anything." <laughs> <laughs> like I just... wish I was too scared. I was too scared. Like he's gonna go downstairs and tell administration or something. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, they can't really do anything about it. I mean, no. it's what you do in your private life, and you can sue the school even if they even if yeah, they. Yeah, I mean, something I don't like want to do that. Listen, man, I yeah. fuck love my job. I'll be honest with you, and like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm not really too terribly worried about it because, like, you know, I, I love my job, and like, dude, I I love these fucking kids, most of them, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like, I want them to be successful. I, you know, what I mean, like, I'm there for the right reasons, and uh, you know, so like if something like this is going to be a deal breaker for the district, then that's, that's their problem. Cause I'll be mm-hmm. able to find another job. Like that's kind of, I'm not pushing the boundaries by any means. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not out there telling kids and doing this and you know what I mean? Directing them. But if they, you know, if some parent finds out and they're offended, I kind of feel like, you know, well deal with it, get over mm-hmm. it. You know, I mean, I'm not going to stop m- my entire life because a parent's offended, you know? Yeah. So, and we have to deal with being offended. I'm offended every goddamn day I wake up this morning and that orange fucking bastard still alive. Sorry, you might want to cut that one out of the podcast. Oh no, so. anyone who follows me on Instagram knows <laughs> I I'm I mean, if okay. you want me if you want me to cut it out, just let me know. No. I I, I'm, I just I don't know. I mean, I you know, I, we're all offended for different reasons, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, writing some stupid lyrics is kind of like, okay, it was just stupid, you know. I I do find it uh kind of because my my interview that that I just did it's probably gonna go up Friday probably but um uh, we were talking and because it was the day that he got admitted with COVID right and and you were talking to Psycho Stick guy no 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 I, I was talking to uh, another band called Missy Eyed uh they okay. so they um this was when COVID like he got diagnosed with it right, right? so. Like in my head, I'm just saying. And like today, I think it was either today or yesterday he got like released from the hospital. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, like there's a lot of conspiracy around it too because of the two. Yeah, well, it, it, about everything, right? <laughs> yeah, the two the two photos that he released of him like working in an office and stuff like that. The metadata shows that those photos were taken like ten minutes apart. Like they weren't like three days apart or something like that. Right. That's what I found kind of funny that it's like they're trying to. Hold on, hold on. Uh, just making sure that the, my FBI agent is watching me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, anyway, no, nah, but um, no. It's like it, this isn't my opinion. It's just you know people, right. no, I people hear you, have man. their conspiracies. They have their uh, opinions on shit, and that's a big one. That he, you know, there could be a lot of. I'm not going to delve into it because, <laughs> I mean, you know, people are going to be offended. People are. We're all there. I mean. We're, I, I hear you 100% and I'm with you 100%. And, you know, that that's a big deal for me with, um, well, you know, one of my so-called friends, a guy that I know forever, like I've known him for probably fucking 25 years. And he posts on Facebook. He's like, if all you're doing, he's like, I don't talk about politics or religion with my friends. That's not what I do. If you're doing that, then you're not my friend. And I'm like, that's all I do with my friends thinking about what's going <laughs> on the world right now is that's all I do with my friends is talk about where we're at. If you're not doing that, you're ignorant to the situation in my opinion, you know, and uh, it, it's a constant fucking struggle. And Justin, the singer of the band who's going to be here tonight, but he ended up having to work. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, this motherfucker would have been perfect for this venue because well, or he wouldn't have been because he's so freaking passionate about this stuff. And, um, you know, like we want to be able to promote this album. We want to be able, we want everybody to buy it, mm-hmm. but like, you know, we also, we don't want to turn people off that are don't necessarily have the same beliefs in politics. And we knew right off the bat when we started to promote this, that we were going to lose people. And, you know, I, I I'm not going to pretend to be one of those bands that has a message because we're not. Um, but it's important to us to have that. And so like, you know, and it speaks to what's going on with right now. One of the satanic tenets, dude, let me look it up real quick. Well, the best one is so fitting for what's happening with Trump. Um, sorry. Give me one second. Here, uh, you while, edit- while you look that up, I actually have a article here basically saying that uh, if you're familiar with the blind mystic Baba Vanga, uh, she, 
uh, she passed away a couple of years ago uh, okay. in, in 1996. And she's known as the Nostradamus of the Balkans. Basically, she's she was blind, but she could tell the future and stuff like that, right? Okay. So basically, uh, I can't find the... Let me see if I can find... Okay, so uh, in a 1989 prediction, she said that, horror, horror, the American brothers will fall after being attacked by the steel birds. The wolves will be in a howling bush and innocent blood will be gushing. Basically, that's, you know, to 9-11. Basically, uh, that type of thing. You know, and one of her prophecies, I can't find the exact prophecy, uh, but she basically uh, said that uh, her claim... This is basically it says this her this her fans claim is what gave her a second sight because she was blinded in a dust storm, and some of her predictions have been uncannily accurate, such as Brexit, 9/11, the Thailand tsunami, and stuff like that. And basically, she predicted Trump getting COVID. She basically said something like, "It says uh, Baba, also known as the Nostradamus of the Balkans, is claimed by fans to have foretold that the U.S. president would suffer." would suffer from a mysterious illness in 2020, which will leave him deaf and with a brain tumor. Now, I'm not going to... What's that? <laughs> What's that? I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so basically they... Um, uh, it was... You know, it's sort of kind of weird that, you know, Baba Vanga, she's known to be saying all this stuff and That's you know crazy. it's like a Nostradamus and stuff like that yeah and it's kind of well you know uh, it, it's it's crazy because you know so I I my uh, I mean I have a master's degree in um in uh cellular biology so mm-hmm. like my focus uh, is on um is uh you know on cell and I so I understand the disease I teach medical microbiology mm-hmm. um and the reality of what's happened to him in this, and I'm not a fucking doctor by any means, but um, the reality of what's happening to him in four days, in my opinion, there's two things. Either this is completely fucking fake and just so he could come back out and be like, look, don't worry about it. I'm awesome. Or it, we, as the doctors say, he's not out of the woods yet, man. He's not out of the woods yet because COVID can be, uh, you know, take 14 days to clear. Now, mm-hmm. the one thing that's different is he's truly receiving the best medical care that's available, which most people don't get, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right here, uh, tenant number five, beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's beliefs. Yeah, like, that is to me, that's powerful and mm-hmm. it's timely, you know. Yeah, that's very that's very reminiscent of the times right now, especially right. with everything that's going that, on. I mean, yeah, I get, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, well, uh, moving on from some, uh, moving on to from politics to dumbass news, uh, man blows up part of a house while chasing a house fly. <laughs> How? So basically, uh, this is, uh, I'm going to flash the article up on screen so everybody knows what I'm reading off of. Uh, So a man has blown up part of his house in France while trying to swat a fly. The man who is in his 80s (laughs) was about to tuck into his dinner when he became irritated by a fly. He picked up an electric fly swatter and started targeting it, but a gas canister was leaking in his home. A reaction between the device and the gas caused the explosion, destroying the kitchen and partly damaging the roof of the home in Parkle's Chenault Village. According to local media, the unnamed man had a lucky escape, sustaining just a burn to the hand. And then it says, however, the fate of the fly is unknown. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine? I just imagine, like, he does that, and then the fly just, like, pulls out of the ashes, and he's... <laughs> <laughs> no, he's like, I'm back! I'm back! <laughs> like, there was a similar story of a guy who tried to kill a spider and ended up setting his house on fire, because he, he was using... a. Uh, I think it was like hairspray and a lighter and he was trying to like light it on fire and then he set his house on fire. <laughs> like who's the dumbass in that situation? <laughs> what, uh, what, where are, you, where are you reading this? What website are you finding these on? Uh, this was on uh BBC. I, I okay. just look up, I just look up like uh weird news and then just try yeah, to find yeah. some. 
I when, mean, when I was younger, I remember there was this whole side of news of the weird and you look up these crazy things. It's like, you know, man calls the cops on uh, man calls the cops because he was just uh, 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 robbers came in and stole all of his weed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually did hear about that one. Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> what the fuck? What's wrong with people? I mean, there, there's one guy. Uh, I forgot how long ago it was. It was either like it was either five or four or five years ago. And the guy basically, he his mugshot was sat all over uh, the, his county jail, like the police department put it on the Facebook, and they're looking for him, right? So then, so then he goes into the comments, right, and he says, "Hey, can y'all use a different photo of me? I don't like this one." <laughs> the guy who was wanted said that. The guy who was wanted typed that, and they were able to track him down. But the best part is, is that the police department took a picture of a jail cell and then tagged him in it and said, here, uh, if you, we're just waiting for you to take your new photo, we have your room ready. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I think he got like, he had charges of like domestic violence or robbery or something like that. So he definitely got what he deserved. I don't know yeah, what's worse. The, stupid. Like, I don't know what's worse. The fact that he got, he got charged with robbery and domestic violence or the fact that he had the gall to, to be like yeah they can't get me and then the police is just like here's your room <laughs> yeah well that's true like you know the question is is did he think they couldn't get him or do you think that he was just being fucking you know what i mean or i think or, he was just being just hard. stupid he's completely <laughs> stupid yeah i don't know dude st- ignorance and stupidity at this point like I-, I still can't believe it exists but it's out yeah. there <laughs> i mean i'm trying to move away from politics but no, 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 no. That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about no, 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 no. That's what I'm talking. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just saying, like everybody can draw your parallels. I'm not trying right, to say right. anything. Right, right. Okay, so uh, uh, the final article uh, that I found. This is off of People. A uh, man uses a live snake as a face mask on the bus. No one batted an eyelid. No way. So basically, I'll e- I'll email you the. Or er, hold on, let me see if I can share my screen real fast. So basically, basically this guy, this is the photo. Uh, he, this is the photo. Basically, he just has a rat, like, or I don't know what kind of snake that is, boa constrictor yeah. or something. And he was something here, you don't want guy. around your neck is what Bas- it is. Basically, he had it like this on his neck, right? And uh-huh. when he had to like get off, he would just pull the snake up like this and just have it over his mouth, <laughs> like. Am I the only one who's thinking like how bad that has to to smell? <laughs> like, like I don't know if that's just me. I just feel like it would be so much worse, especially yeah, than a mask. He must really love that snake. <laughs> that has to be like that had to be the snake that he had during his divorce or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's right, not it's not you. possible. It's not possible that it just all of a sudden <laughs> he. <laughs> just randomly pulled up with this snake right you know I mean? he's like you know what if i need to mask i'm gonna go buy a snake no yeah you're right i i like that divorce theory right there <laughs> like i get i get the snake in the divorce and i'm gonna use it as a mask you bitch <laughs> <laughs> i know i know one guy he um he bought a snake right or uh not a snake uh his wife like took everything in the in the divorce and what happened was that he used i think it was like his alimony or something like that and he used it. He used it, and it was a. Um, he used that money, and he bought a fucking water buffalo. Like, <laughs> like he he basically used it. He basically uh, used the water buffalo and was basically saying like, <laughs> "This is my uh, this is my new water buffalo. Fuck you, Sharon." Like that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, what I just, the hell would you do with a water buffalo? I mean, I guess eventually eat it. That that is like a <laughs> that is like a good like question. Like, what would you do with a water buffalo? You can't eventually eat buffalo, but like yeah. you'd have to harvest it. You know, whatever. I'll, yeah. I'll stop thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, I'm looking at the time right now. We should probably be uh, wrapping up. Uh, so cool. basically, uh, you have. Uh, you have 30 seconds to promote anything that you want to. <laughs> Go to RazorRisk.com 
and uh, you'll be able to find links to uh, the new album and you'll be able to find links to all of our merchandise and our tickets for our online streaming event on October 30th, uh, which will be a live show uh, featuring all the music from all of our CDs. Okay. All right. Well, that's going to conclude uh, the podcast for this week. Uh, thank you, Warren, for coming out and joining us. Uh, if you ever need to, if you ever want to come back on and talk some more politics, <laughs> talk some talk some topics that some people may find offensive, <laughs> just let me know. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening or watching at home. And we will see you guys later. Hey!